And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some spooky boom ship. We're going to be playing some meme tier decks today and tomorrow. Got a good amount of donation decks for them. Um, didn't stream yesterday. Those of y'all on YouTube, um, you know, I was, uh, took a little day off of, of uploading and everything. Just, you know, needed a day off. It had been a while since I had taken one. And, uh, but we're back at it today. It's not going to be meme tier Monday because it's not necessarily Monday, but it's still... Um, you know, it's meme tier day. Um, let's see. So our first, so we have three, three different decks today. All right. So our first one here is going to be spooky boom ship. This new card, um, in Bilgewater deal one to, um, deal one to any unit. And then you summon an, an, an amount of powder kegs equal to the amount of damage dealt. And that's going to be important so that if you have multiple powder kegs in play already, you're going to be doing a good amount of damage with boom ship, boom ship and then just basically replacing those powder kegs. You always gain one additional powder keg depending on however many you have. So like if you have two powder kegs in play, that means you're going to do three damage, so you'll get three powder kegs. So you'll uh, net one powder keg, um, and that you know that doesn't you know that's how that always works with boom ship. Of course, that math can change if you have the dreadway in play that doubles all damage, then that can change. But um, we're going to be a a Shadow Isles Bilgewater deck that is based around powder kegs. We have more more powder and boom ship, um, and then a lot of ways to set them off. But we're not just going to be using our um, powder kegs as um, extra damage for removal for the units, even though like, that will happen sometimes. But we're going to be able to use it for extra nexus damage also. You know, like whenever Misfortune attacks and you deal one damage to the bat battling enemies and the enemy Nexus, that is, you know, going to be damage dealt to the enemy Nexus for your Powder Keg. Doom Beast, draining the enemy Nexus. You could get, a, if we have a bunch of Powder Kegs here, we could get a big drain on the enemy Nexus. You know, like, basically we can turn Doom Beast into, like, if we have three Powder Kegs in play, Doom Beast suddenly, I guess only two Powder Kegs in play, it will turn into a drain four um, you know, so basically better than decimate, right? If we just have you like, you can kind of build your own decimate with like more powder and doom beast and things like that. Um, crack shot Corsair doing Nexus damage, all that kind of stuff. And then of course, Dreadway is going to be a huge part of our deck at the top end, doubling all of the damage from everything we got. We'll have the Ledros Dreadway combo in here. That will be an instant win if we can pull it off. And that's kind of our deck. All right, so let's go play our five games. We're just playing them in normal. Because it is meme tier day. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Alright, so we'll keep, you know, Crackshot Corsair, Misfortune. Um, I'm not sure about these two cards. I think I'm just going to mulligan them. Like, obviously Withering Well can kill a Zoe, but that's not for like a long time. And by then, yeah, like, they should have protection. For Zoe, that's not that's not a very good removal spell. I'll shoot the wings off of um, and I don't know if like Targon Freljord is going to have stuff that we really need that Glimpse Beyond, but I guess we'll just get him right back. I guess we'll get Withering Whale and Glimpse Beyond right back. All right, well, this may work. Okay. Well, that helped. I never so I'll lead with Crackshot Corsair before playing these, so we, we kind of see if we want to play Misfortune or Doom Beast. Gosh, I guess kind of neither. No, so I, we're just going to play Misfortune and go towards the Misfortune level up, I suppose. I'm not going to be attacking with Misfortune into this um, this thing that's probably bigger. Well, maybe we can. No. Love ya. All right, one out of four, and then that's also Nexus damage for the Gangplank. Good. 
I probably should be playing Gangplank right here. Because this is definitely not a time I want to use Doom Beast. I do not want to use Doom Beast. On, like, I don't want the Powder Keg to get blown up by a Doom Beast. I'd much rather use Unspeakable Horror. Yeah, I think I should have played Gangplank right there. Now I'm playing Gangplank before attacking. Instead of being able to open attack. Also, if I, if I would have played Gangplank last turn, how this just kind of came out, I would have been able to go and... Uh, would have been able to play double deckhand and have Unspeakable Horror still. Yes, I, I am going to attack... I guess they probably just don't block. I guess I gotta play this first, because I guess they just don't block. You know, I was being I was planning on being able to attack with a good amount of stuff. Hmm. I, I honestly am not sure if Zoe or Sparklefly is more valuable at this point. You know, three power elusive lifesteal that they can make four or five power, that's not gonna be easy to defeat. Um No, Zoe's got to be better. Zoe's very underrated, but what does? How is their deck? A question they probably have to ask is how good is their deck um, whenever they don't have Zoe? I wonder if they thought that that Zoe was still going to stay alive through that, if they didn't realize that the two powder kegs were going to do three damage. Oh, I'm sorry. So the question, I'm sorry. The question was, was how could we get the, how could we make sure that the misfortune thing, uh, you know, did the damage instead of the crack shot Corsair and, and, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was, so that's a good question. So basically what we were going to have to do, if, if we didn't have that, if we were planning on just our, um, powder kegs being blown up by crack shot Corsair and misfortune, of course we would want the misfortune one to happen. And I think that they would go in the middle, left to right. I think that would make sense. Like the one on the left goes in the middle first, the one on the right goes in the middle second, and so the one on the right would resolve first. So we'd have to make sure that Misfortune was on the right of the Crackshot Corsair, which you can you can kind of rearrange them by putting them into combat and then taking them out and stuff. So like on your attacking turn, you can actually do some rearranging there, which is pretty nice. Sparklefly is just more important than the other two. So right now my Gangplank is at 4 out of 5. And so I want to level up the Gangplank before I attack. That's my current plan. And so to do that, we need to do Nexus damage before we attack. And so to do Nexus damage before we attack, we have Doom Beast. This would be a good winter. Must 
we fight? So we're doing three damage to all their blockers, right? No, we're doing two da two damage. Never mind, just two damage. Okay. Never mind. So yeah, so it wasn't safe for misfortune to attack. You've concerns blessed by snow and stars. This will be a good winter. So before we put them in in the middle, misfortune was on the left, but still, let's see. So yeah, like this. This is kind of weird, right? So the Gangplank one's happening first. So that one went on last. Love Tap was second. And then Crack Shot Corsair first. So is that just CMC? Like, that's that's the only way I can see this order being is, like, CMC. Like, the one cost, then three cost, then five cost. Yeah, GP's resolving. Yeah, so Gangplank's resolving first because he's on the right. But why? Why is Misfortune going before? Like, why is Crackshot Corsair going before Misfortune? Right? Like, why is Misfortune in between Crackshot Corsair and Gangplank? And even like whenever they were set up beforehand. Like that's that's the confusing thing right there. When you have things on the front row and back row, like what order do they take? I'll just wait on you, Crackshot Corsair. Well, I mean, even if it was if, if it was just like last note info on the back row, misfortune was on the left, and the other two were on the right of misfortune. So I don't know I don't know any reason why the misfortune would be in between those other two based on order positioning. The only reason why it would be is is like mana cost positioning. They did like one, one, then three, then five. See nothing left when I'm done. <laughs> Not dead anywhere else. Dead on the ground. Our next attack is going to be a leveled up misfortune attack. And that with leveled up misfortune with a whole bunch of powder kegs is very, very good. Okay, because the misfortune does one damage three times, and so we have three powder kegs right there on an open attack, so that would be, you know, four damage three times. I don't imagine we're going to level up misfortune again. That's probably the only time that, that we will, but we got to at least one, so that was cool. I think I keep these. Ew. So I like I like keeping this the spell mana for unspeakable horror, but maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I should have just played the Dreadway deck hand and then the the misfortune. Hey Adam, thank you very much. Thanks for joining. The day is going pretty well. Don't get in my way. A four three. I've worked up something special. Ah, yes. The fairness of the Grand Plaza. So in case they, in case they try to single combat and kill my Powder Keg.
Guess I did just lose a 3 1 though by not casting them at the same time. But I protected against single combat. But I did lose that 3 1. Okay, let's see. So our Misfortune's absolutely going to die th their next attack turn. But I do have this Harrowing. Which could be pretty cool. Yeah, we've created a lot of, like, good extra cards, right? Like, the two Unspeakable Horrors creating these Lunari Chase Stalkers. With them being elusive, they could definitely be very good. Um, the Petty Officer making a Mage Seeker Conservator that makes a Harrowing. Like, that's, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Um, not sure if it'll really matter against, you know, Hecarim with the Grand Plaza. But it's still pretty cool. Like a fish in water. All right, so this is... Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna play this to try to get two blockers. Like, this this game is basically over if they if they do everything correctly. That's already... Oh, I guess, never mind, that thing has Scout. Yeah, never mind, that thing has Scout. That's a good attack. Never mind. Let me just get three free damage. They should not attack with it again. Yeah, that's not... Or, wait, wait, six things. Never mind. I was thinking that this was going to fill up the board. Okay, never mind, they can. But I guess those things are supposed to be after the Hecarim. But, I, yeah, again, in this scenario, it doesn't really matter. Because I can't kill Hecarim. But you should always attack with these things before Hecarim. In case Hecarim dies in combat. So I can draw two cards. I'm not sure what two cards we'd be looking for. Yeah, I guess I'm supposed to draw two cards. Sisters. Where I'm, where I'm at right now. Just going Kegs Doom Beast with the. So you go Kegs Doom Beast Shade Stalker. Kegs Doom Beast Shade Stalker just doesn't really have any chance against Hecarim. I was hoping this, like maybe they would. Break their legs. All right, one on one. I'll have my revenge one way. Basically, just had to pray that they would put their Hecarim in combat, like blocking wise, and I don't really know why they would. So this is basically the exact same hand we had last game, and I I kept these three last game. It didn't work out against the Grand Plaza and. All those awesome ephemeral challengers, you know, with the Grand Plaza. But this deck won't have the Grand Plaza. I still think it's it's probably what we should keep here. Be nothing left when I'm done. I wonder what this deck would be like with just Twisted Fate instead of Misfortune. Where you can red card with these powder kegs or gold card or they just have the big versatility of um, Twisted Fate because well Misfortune has a really good attack ability we can't protect Misfortune 
in the slightest, and we also... And so therefore it's also pretty unlikely that we're going to level up Misfortune since we can't protect her. To be fair, we wouldn't really be drawing too many other cards besides just like Glimpse Beyond for Twisted Fates, so we wouldn't really be leveling up Twisted Fate very much. Again, not protecting Twisted Fate either. Looking for trouble? It found you. All the world on one arrow. Got a surprise for him. I'm fully expecting like Frostbite spells, like something like that to kill Misfortune. We'll use. Um, yeah, it's like fully expecting that. No We're going to use Glimpse down. Beyond. So we got a damage on the Ash. And got more damage on them. Because I think, like, our deck, we got to be pretty aggressive, right? Like, we, we should be taking aggressive lines that deal damage to them. So Boomship slow speed. That's too bad. I was hoping that they didn't do that and I would be able to um you know, like they didn't if they challenged like my cutthroat first, then I would have been able to use the powder keg to kill Ash. Right, it's not it's not possible for our deck to have multiple attacks that misfortune usually likes. Alright, we're setting up a pretty good withering whale. Now, even if this doesn't work, you know, like if they use like Elixir of Iron or Troll Chant, and now Ash will have two health, but we'll have Powder Keg um, from the Boom Ship, and then we'll also have, um, you know, this Unspeakable Horror. So they'll have to have another Elixir of Iron or Troll Chant. Bilgewater's a mess, but I'll clean it. All right, very good. And we're getting close to the Dreadway. May actually be, may be able to play the Dreadway this turn. Or like this game, sorry. This rose has thorns. Getting close to the Dreadway. I rarely forget and never forget. Good. There's no coin in forgiveness. All right, so we can have more powder. Faster than my arrow? I think not. I'll show hmm. pain. So I can do more powder parlay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we do. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly, potato. That's. Yeah, that's another option you could go with this kind of deck, is just playing a lot more um, area damage with your with your powder kegs, like your Withering Whales. Because, yeah, you can, you can have Withering Whale and Make It Rain and um, Twisted Fate, Red Card, um, that kind of stuff. You could be a more control-type oriented deck with those with Dreadway.
That's definitely an option. So trade there. I don't think I'd trade. I don't think Gangplank for the Sheriff is a good trade, though. Got a new gangplank. Fortune favors the bold, Captain. Will no one listen? The chase begins. Love ya. All right, Zap. Draw a cool spell for me. Like a fish in water. <laughs> what you got? Unspeakable horror. It drains two right now because it doubles, right? Like so, whatever it does, it doubles. Gotta go with the flow. All right, what do you guys have? More powder. Winter, take you. Yeah, I guess I do this right now. These are both attacking for four. Okay. If I don't do that, I'm only putting them down to one, even though I'm kind of opening myself up to harsh winds. Okay, for the last two games, we're going to try uh, switching the deck up a little bit. The person that donated the deck wanted to, wanted to see a little bit different version. So we're going to be playing Twisted Fate instead of Misfortune. And since we're playing Twisted Fate... Um, and then we won't be as aggressive attacking. We're going to take out the Crackshot Corsair, the one mana card, and play a Make It Rain also. So we're going to try to have um, all of these different Powder Keg cards. We're going to try to have some more um, ways to really take advantage of them with Make It Rain and Twisted Fate clearing out some boards. So let's see how that does. All right, Karma Leeson. Why did I say Leeson? Zoe. <laughs> Karma Zoe. I could see, I could honestly see mulliganing the Gangplank also, just with Gangplank being a five mana card. But definitely keeping Zap's Brayfin. You, know, you want your cards that can play a longer game in this kind of matchup. So that's going to require me to play two cards, like Boom Ship and then Make It Rain, to keep that from going crazy. I think it's worth it. Welcome, Rad. Yeah, having a later stream today. So I spent two cards to their one, but kept them from drawing gems, which gems are very important for their deck, and dealt a little bit of nexus damage on top of it. And we can go get that extra card right back here with this Brayfin. I fight with my spirits, not my fists. I was walking into Hush there, but I, I didn't mind too much. Oh, that was okay. Neither the flames nor the deaths can claim me. Obviously that powder keg's dead. If I pass, it would have been even on mana again. But I think it's I think this is better to get Gangplank in play. They have Make It Rain and Boom Ship as a 
couple of options. Breathe in, breathe out. Through the coral. I'm testing them, see if they're going to use Hush. Okay. And I, I like getting Hush out of their hand. Seeing if they would do something to protect the, that first Zoe, but I guess they didn't with having the backup Zoe. That's still pretty good, right? Like, our, our Twisted Fate just traded with a Deny. Like, a Deny is a really valuable card, so we got Deny out of their hand, plus we still have Twisted Fate in our hand. That was a very valuable trade. And now, since they had to deny the red card... You have the Withering Will resolving. And that's game. Good job, Twisted Fate. GG's. Hypothetically. All right, back to Zoe again, this time with Lee Sin instead of Karma. I'm much more scared of Lee Sin than Karma, just in general. You know, Zo you know Zoe's great either way, but just much more scared of Lee Sin. And um, so if, we, if they have a turn one Zoe and we use Unspeakable Horror, we won't have... We won't have Nightfall, of course. The rank seasons always last two months. And they so they last between um, expansions. So Hmm. I think what my opponent just did was play the Zoe on turn two, so that now they can have Pill Cascade with Nightfall, which that is the correct play. Not play Zoe on turn one, play Zoe on turn two. That is the correct play. I'm gonna wait till next turn to have uh, Nightfall turned on for Petty Officer. Oh, or now I can just have Boom Ship. That makes a little bit life a little bit easier. All right, gonna pass to them. Okay, two Nobifies, gone. Portal me something cool. The problem, yeah, the problem with casting the, the problem with the Pale Cascade, you know, like I could have, yeah, like if that was like what we were what we were reading on turn two of like making them burn the pill cascade, they're still drawing they're drawing a card off their pill cascade. I'm not creating a, a nightfall card um, off of my unspeakable horror, so I wanted to wait and you know wait till the next turn where you know I'm I'm creating that random nightfall card. So if their plans to play Lee Sin. What do I want to do? See, the earlier I get Twisted Fate down, the better, right? Like, it's the, just the easier it is to level up, or, like, the the faster it levels up, I guess. But, um, you know, if they just play Lee Sin this turn and then challenge Twisted Fate next turn, I'm not going to be able to do anything about that. I need more runs. Wow. That's a good hit. That's a good hit. We've had two really good hits with Petty Officer, the Mage Seeker Conservator before, which I guess we lost that game. We never cast the Harrowing, but just that's a good hit. Be nothing left when I'm done. So now the thing's a four-four. So 
So they still do have that Pill Cascade we talked about before. We'd have this, but it could have just been Nopify. Okay, well, we got a Concussive Palm out of their hand. Man. That's twice we've hit Pill Cascades with Unspeakable War. Great hit. You cannot win. Right, good turn for us. We each hold a world and not Lee Sin is also a good turn for us. Keep up, keep up. Gems are superb. Bad for the teeth, though. Go, floaty crystals. Focus, focus. So the problem with going boom ship on the on the mentor there is I didn't like how they would be able to challenge the powder keg immediately if they yeah, yeah like use something to keep their mentor the stones alive. Trying to get rid of the side of the dragon. Boo. Dead in their tracks. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's do this. Let's go waste a hush here. The worst card to see. Only I can endure the dragon's fury. Yeah, that card's so much scarier than Karma. I could see them denying the Glimpse Beyond. If they do that, I'd, I have another Glimpse Beyond. I think it's more likely they deny Glimpse Beyond than deny Make It Rain. But maybe not. Yeah, they're stopping Glimpse Beyond. Yeah. I think they're stopping Glimpse Beyond, right? Aren't they? Yeah. Down to twelve. What is gained when you return malevolence? Go more powder, Doom Beast, Doom Beast. Oh, that only counts as that only counts as one. I was thinking maybe that would count as two. I. I don't really know how I'm staying alive, though, from this lease in because I'm not going to kill them this turn. I mean, I, I can get some drain in with the Doom Beast, but still, it's not very likely that I'm staying alive through this lease in. Very unlikely. Enter 
Alright, no, that's... That'll be lethal. Yeah, I'd much rather play against Karma than Lee Sin. Oh well. Lee Sin's really good. This isn't winnable. We're, <laughs> we're taking lethal right here. Any damage. I mean, the full swing wasn't going to wasn't going to help me with them having the two one life steal blocker, and you know they could block very safely with Lisa. And a, a full swing wouldn't really help me. Okay, so um, I like the twist of fate a whole lot. I think the twist of fate was better than the misfortune in this kind of deck. I would I would just keep on going with the control deck though. Um, with this the boom ship, like the boom ship was actually pretty good. Like it it was very useful in a di you know, like different times. Um, yeah, like, it, it was very useful. It was good. But one thing that we really struggled with is we struggled with, uh, like, our, our losses were, you know, Hecarim and Lee Sin, right? Like, we just had, two like, two very big champions that we don't have enough damage to kill. And so both both of those losses, you're just looking, uh, looking at the deck and wishing that we had Vengeance, um, you know, or, or just something like that, right? Like, a, a hard removal spell, something that can kill a larger champion, um, but besides that, it's like maybe just a couple of vengeances in here to be able to to have that kind of card. But besides that, I, I liked our deck. It was it was versatile. It, the uh, powder kegs with all of these like little damage things were really good, and you know the twisted fates. Uh, that was that's a good addition. Twisted fate and make it rain both did their job. They did pretty good. Uh, but we would just need a way to be able to kill larger champions. I just, I don't like how Crumble's slow speed, and then, you know, you also have to sacrifice something. I just like Vengeance a lot more. I would just rather spend two extra mana and not have to worry about sacrificing something, but then also having fast speed. So if they go open attack with their lease in, you have removal. I think that's where I'd rather be. But, yeah, so that's, you know, like, Ruination could could also fit in this kind of deck. Yeah, so that's something that, those are some cards you could think about adding. All right, but that's our first meme deck of the day. That's Spooky Boom Ship. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Let me know what you've been doing with Boom Ship. We've played a couple of different cool Boom Ship decks now with Anivia and now with um, Shadow Owls with Withering Whale and those kind of cards. Um, if you've been experimenting with Boom Ship with anything else, leave those comments. Let me know. Love to hear it. All right, but that's all I got here for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.